Hello, West Des Moines string families. Uh, Curtis Barr here today with a piano play along or demonstration about our at the ball game performance for fourth graders. You can follow along. This should be a good representation of the story and the piano accompaniment. I'm going to break this into two acts. This will be act one. So for our first song, as you're seeing the book here is the Can Can Overture. There's a little introduction. story tonight is about a set of twins, Allie and Greg, who for some reason everyone called Grego. This time we'll need to turn the page as quickly as possible. Their mom, sweet Dolce, everyone just called Mac and here we'll just be playing the bottom line now that you know our main players let's begin our story hey Grego wake up called Allie oh my gosh Allie leave me alone replied Greg You're going to be late for breakfast, Lazy Bones, Allie called over her shoulder. She slammed his bedroom door. Birthday breakfast, she giggled as she scampered loudly down the hallway. Hey, Grego managed to shout out. Save some for me. searched the messy floor of his room, quickly looking for his favorite jersey. Finally, as he found it, there was a gentle knock on his door, followed by his mother's sweet voice. Gregory, she said, because even though everyone else called him Grego, she always called him Gregory. I made your favorite today. It's all ready. Will you be down soon to have breakfast with us? Grego, there's a surprise, blurted Allie. <laughs> Allie couldn't contain herself as she ran back down the hall. Hold on, I'm almost dressed, Grego managed to say. <laughs> Grego pulled the jersey on over his messy mop of hair and brushed the front to try to flatten out some of the wrinkles the shirt had acquired from laying on the floor next to his bed. He looked in the mirror and admired the logo of his favorite baseball team, the Aces. As he stood admiring the reflection, a big tired yawn came over him. The bases will slide up and down. He opened his creaky door, the violins will slide up, and followed his nose to the kitchen. Grego rubbed the tired from his eyes as the bright kitchen lights flooded his vision. He could see his sister. Of course, he was there. And his mother, too. But who was that fourth plate set for? He could smell something familiar over the aroma of breakfast. It smelled like his dad's Chris Cologne. Sure enough, with coffee in his hand, his dad stepped around the corner.
birthday, he said in his usual loud voice. His smile stretched across his broad face. It was such a surprise for Grego to see his dad this early at home, and he bounded towards him to give him a hug. This birthday was off to the best start ever. There will be a short introduction before we play this song. As they sat down to breakfast together, the normal chatter about day-to-day -day things filled the air until at last the subject of the twins' birthday came up. You know, Max said, there's a reason I'm home early today. Really? Allie questioned. Come on, Dad, don't tease us, Grego pleaded. Mac, tell them about your surprise, said their mother Dolce in her typical sweet way. Well, I know how much you two love to play ball, Mac said, and I know how much you love the aces. Yeah, said Allie. Dad, said Grego, did you buy us new jerseys? You'd better hurry and tell them before they explode, Mac, Dolce smiled sweetly. Better than a jersey, son. I bought us all tickets to the matinee game today, Mac blurted more than said. He must have been very excited, too. Allie leaned in and whispered to Grego just loud enough for everyone to hear, They're playing the Sharks today. Oh, no. We never win against the Sharks. I'm not so sure that this was a good idea, Dad, Grego said. Mac had calmed down considerably since delivering the news, but still, in a rather excited tone, he reminded Grego and Allie that in a ball game, anything can happen. And besides, their favorite pitcher, old Joe Clark, was on the hill for their beloved aces. He reminded his kids that old Joe was pitching his heart out this year and hadn't lost a game yet this season. They all agreed that maybe the aces did have a chance today and they might have an even better chance if they all hurried to the ballpark to cheer them on. That's the end of Act 1.